everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. I'm really excited to welcome today's guest back to the show. She is a chef, and she is going to be making a recipe with a very unusual ingredient that I've never heard about. It's called tiger nuts. Now, don't let your you know, your brain go there. That's not what they are. I don't really know what they are. I looked it up. I think it's a starch. It's not a nut. So that means it's probably a lot lower in fat. And she's going to be using in both of her recipes. She's going to be making kelp noodles with a tiger nut sauce, as well as summer basil rolls. Please welcome back Chef Christine Waltermeyer. It's so nice to see you again. Oh my gosh. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for having me back. It's great to be here. My pleasure. Before uh, you start with the recipe, in case my guests are unfamiliar with you, why don't you just talk a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure, of course. So yeah, so I'm a natural food chef and I focus on plant-based vegan cuisine and I have a food blog slash online cooking school. We used to offer a um, in-person natural chef training program and then that sort of um, morphed into an online program. So now we can reach people all over the world, which is really exciting. We've had students in Vietnam and Vienna. And um, so that's great. And I'm also the author of Vegilicious. Um, that's a cookbook that's on Amazon. And it just features a lot of, you know, yummy plant-based recipes. So I love teaching cooking. <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, thank you. And thank you for teaching plant-based cooking. Oh, yes. Yeah, no, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so what are tiger nuts? Where did you even hear of them? I've never heard of them. So tiger nuts, like you said, they're actually not really a nut. They're more of a tuber. So they're very starchy. And, um, you know, you can get them in the form of tiger nut flour, which can be used in baking or added to smoothies and things like that. It's very high in fiber. Or you can buy, you know, what I'm using today It's the tiger nut butter. So, you know, it's, one of those kind of, you know, less common ingredients. You might have to just get it on Amazon like I did, but it really it has like a nice, sweet, nutty flavor. Um, these are typically grown in either Spain or West Africa, and they just become popular here, um, you know, more with the paleo diet, but it is a vegan ingredient. So I figured why not, you know, bring it to the uh, plant-based community here as something that's just a nice option that is nut-free for people who have nut sensitivities and just has great flavor and it's very versatile. I have never heard of it. Where did you even hear of it? <laughs> Where did I hear about it? I guess just like with going through, you know, I'm just such a recipe person. So I'm always looking for new recipes and new ingredients. And, uh, you know, some family members have nut sensitivities. So then I'm looking for like nut free butters and things like that. So yeah, just one thing led to another and I stumbled upon them and just sort of fell in love with uh, tiger nuts. But now I should say, if you get the actual dried, um, tiger nuts, you can't just sort of like pop them out of the bag and like munch on them. They're very hard compared to like an almond or something. They're like, you know, really chewy and, you know, hard to, to eat just like that. So you have to soak them if you want to make them into like a plant-based milk, which is another delicious thing that you can enjoy. I don't know if you've heard of horchata. It's a, um, you know, classic, um, you know, drink with, um, you know, made with these tiger nuts. And it's actually, again, if you make the Valencian version uh, from Spain, it uses these tiger nuts to make this milky drink. So really fun. Wow. So I, I'm going to start looking for them. Are they fairly low in fat compared to an actual tree nut? Yeah, they, I, I want to say that they are a little lower in fat. I know they're definitely lower in protein. And they are more um, kind of like a fiber source. They're a great source of fiber. They even provide that prebiotic fiber. Um, so that's another great thing that it's like that insulin resistant starch that we, you know, it's very good for the gut. Well, that is cool. So I can't wait to see how you use them. Yeah, exactly. So I've got another interesting ingredient today that I'm going to pair with them. And this is actually kelp noodles. I don't know if anyone's prepared these on the show before, but they're really fun. Just literally made from a sea vegetable kelp. So um, these two I got on good old Amazon. And uh, it's really a great option for anyone who's gluten free, or even just looking for, you know, less carbohydrate options. You know, a lot of people use these maybe more for weight loss or weight maintenance, things like that. Um, so they come just sort of like this, you know, just sort of in a blob when you get them right out of the package. And I remember trying to eat them like this. Like I saw raw food recipes where you just basically, you know, add things to them and you can eat them like this. But let me tell you, they are chewy, crunchy. I'm going to show you a little secret to making them much more tasty. So what I like to do is I take baking soda, believe it or not. I take a teaspoon of baking soda. I add that to the noodles 
And then along with that, I also add an acid, my lemon juice. So I'm going to um, squeeze the juice of this lemon right in here, catch the seeds. And those two together, the baking soda and the lemon, you'll get a little bit of a reaction there. You know, remember in science class when we used to make volcanoes with, <laughs> you know, vinegar and baking soda, that combination. So it starts reacting. And what this does is it really helps to break down and soften the noodles without cooking a thing. That's the other thing with like summer coming up here in the Northeast. You're out in California, so it's always warm and gorgeous, but uh, in the warm weather, we don't feel like cooking as much. So this, you know, both recipes, you don't really need to cook anything. I love that. I call that eating without heating. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. Yeah, so you basically just massage the lemon juice and the baking soda in there. I can feel it already. It's starting to soften up. And, um, and then you basically just let it sit for five minutes. It sort of marinates like that. Um, and you'll see different recipes out there. Some add a little more baking soda. Some use the method where you add water, like warm water. I tried that, but then it, they really got broken up like vermicelli. So I find that this method and ratio really works nicely. So we're just gonna let these sit for five minutes um, just to get nice and soft and then um, we'll rinse them off. So that's pretty straightforward and we can move on to our sauce. Yeah. Actually, and, you know, for people that are, you know, wanting to lose weight, kelp noodles, and the whole pack is like five calories or something, isn't it? It's crazy. I know it's really low calorie. Let's check and see, actually. You're right. The whole package here, as far as calories go, why am I not seeing the calories? Total fat, zero. Um, hmm, protein is also zero. A little bit of sodium, 35 milligrams. It's a sea vegetable. Oh, oh, calories. Here we go. Six. So like six calories for the Oh my God, time. I was wrong. I don't know if we can afford that extra one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and sea vegetables, you know, you, I'm sure you know, Chef AJ are a great source of minerals and trace minerals. They say, you know, you can get these minerals from um, sea vegetables. We can't even get from land vegetables. So it's good to include a little bit of those in our diet here and there. Um, yeah. Now what I have here, this is going to add color, flavor, you know, just a little variety as far as the phytonutrients. I've got a half cup of carrots that have been matchstick, or you can just shred them too, and a half cup of uh, purple cabbage, red cabbage. So we're just going to put that in a bowl and we're going to marinate this as well, because I find that when they're raw, you know, they're a little crunchy and that's great for like a salad or something. But in this case, I want to um, soften them just a little bit. So I'm going to add a little lemon juice. I'm going to add about a half cup, sorry, quarter cup, just a couple tablespoons really is even fine of lemon juice. And you just kind of, you know, mix that in there and um, that helps to soften them. So we're just gonna let these sit and marinate and get soft too while the noodles are doing the same. All right, so let's set this aside. I don't know if you guys can see that, but basically just sort of a little marination process there. And while that's marinating, we'll go ahead and make our delicious tiger nut sauce. <laughs> So yeah, so this is, I don't know if there's other brands out there. This is called Paleo Tiger. Like I said, the paleo diet has kind of popularized the use of tiger nuts um, because I guess paleolithic ancestors ate these a lot evidently for energy. So, um, but I have my tiger nut butter. I'm doubling the recipe. You know, your audience will get a copy of these recipes, I'm sure. Um, yes, and they're, I, in the, yeah. they're in the show notes already. And by show notes, I mean what appears under the YouTube video. Unfortunately, if you watch on Facebook, you don't get to see the chat or the show notes. Okay, right, okay. So uh, let's see, let me just grab a bowl here to make our sauce. So yeah, I'm doubling this. So you'll see big portions here, but just know that, you know, you can, if you're just making one of the recipes, you won't need, you know, this double batch. I'm just making this for both recipes all at once. So that's basically a cup of our tiger nut butter. Then I'm going to add some other flavors here. So I like to add, you know, kind of classic flavors for like, um, think of this like a peanut sauce. It's really just basically a modification of a peanut sauce. And to that, you would typically add your ginger root and your garlic. So I'm just gonna mince up a little bit of that, however much you would like to add. Ginger is so great for circulation, right? I did not know that. Mm, yeah, yeah, no, it's great for circulation, digestion. And there's it even tastes, tastes great that we know that that it tastes great has such nice flavor yeah but really um you know like in ayurvedic traditions they feel like it warms the body so anyone who's like more of a cold body type i'm i'm that cold person who can never get warm so i always like those warming things like ginger tea and warming spices now speaking of spices if you want to make this spicy if you're a spice fan you can definitely add like 
crushed red chili flakes or cayenne or even a little bit of like a, you know, jalapeno or habanero pepper chopped up. Um, so feel free, but I'm just getting my spice uh, factor here just from the ginger and garlic. So now I'm just going to mince up a little garlic. And I did want to mention, have you ever seen those garlic halves where you cut them in half and you get that little green sprout in the middle? You see that guy in there? You'll want to pull that out. So I always use like the end of my knife um, and I just sort of cut that out of there because if you keep that in there, it can make a dish bitter. So that's just a little, little chef tip for you. So I'm just mincing up a clove. These are large cloves. So normally you could use like two cloves of garlic. And if you don't like garlic, feel free to use uh, something else. Like you could use like the little ends of scallion. Sometimes I find if people, you know, don't digest garlic well, or they're sensitive to that, I'll use the little white bottoms on a scallion. And that's a little more mild and yet it still gives you that pungency that you're looking for here. Any dressing is gonna be, you know, really flavorful and satisfying when you get those, you know, different tastes in there. So like we've got pungency from the ginger and the garlic. We've got um, that, you know, subtle sweet flavor from the tiger nut butter. Then we're gonna add some tart factor with a little bit of, um, this is lime juice and lemon juice. So I've got like a couple tablespoons of that. But you know, when you make this at home, if you like it more tart or something, feel free to just vary this and, you know, play around with the portions and make it suit your taste buds. Okay, and I'm just gonna whisk these together. And then um, to get like a little mild saltiness, I know we don't wanna do like too much sodium on the SOS diet, but this is a low sodium um, so soy sauce. Actually, it's not even soy sauce today. I chose the coconut aminos. I don't know if you tend to use that Chef AJ or you know, if people are really avoiding salt altogether, you know, maybe that could be skipped, but I'm just using a touch of that, so. So yeah, you know, um, I, what I like about coconut aminos is it's the lowest of anything. It's lower than salt. It's lower than shoyu. It's lower than soy sauce. It's lower than low sodium tamari. It's lower than brags. It's about 90 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon as opposed to like 2,300 for salt. So if wow. somebody was wanting to use something with some salt, that would be my choice. But I have found that using California balsamic vinegars um, can take the place of that. Ah, there you go. I knew you would have a creative uh, substitute for that. So there you go. California balsamic vinegar. Love it. Now this is apple juice. I'm just adding some pure apple juice here for a little uh, tartness and just to dilute this a bit. You could just use water if you prefer. But I find that adds a, like, a nice little, you know, sweet and tart and refreshing um, touch there. And you definitely need to add some liquid here because you'll see that once you add, you know, your um, either your California balsamic vinegar or your low sodium um, coconut aminos that you're gonna, it's gonna really thicken up, you know, it actually, it's funny that you're adding liquid and yet it's getting thicker. So, but once you add even more liquid like the apple juice or a little water, then it starts to thin out and get like more of a desirable consistency. You can see that it's really starting to get a nice smooth, silky consistency. If I wanna thin that out even more, I'm just gonna add a little touch more of juice or like I said, you can add water if you prefer. And yeah, this is such a versatile sauce. It goes great on noodles. You can use it as a dipping sauce for these uh, basil summer rolls we're also gonna make today. Two really nice, refreshing recipes. All right, so now I'm getting more of that consistency that we want. I don't know if you can see, but that's nice, creamy and smooth. And of course, you know, you'll taste it too and see how you like the flavor. And... All right, so our sauce is ready to go. So we're just gonna put that aside and you know, I may be rushing these, but it's probably been, I would say at least a few minutes. So let's see how we're doing on our texture. Nice and soft, yeah. So I'd say we can probably go ahead and rinse these. I'm gonna give these um, maybe another minute or two though, just to soak. And by the way, I wanna mention that um, for the sweetness in the sauce, I forgot to add our sweetener. We want a little bit more sweetness. You can just go with the apple juice if you want, but if you like, you can add, um, yeah, AJ, we talked about this ahead of time. I was like, is it okay to show the uh, sweet potato nectar? So this is a sweetener and it's made literally just from sweet potatoes. So it's like a, a vegan, um, you know, sweetener. It's almost like, I don't wanna say a vegan honey because it has a different flavor. You're gonna get almost more of a molasses flavor from this, but it's just a nice, you know, if you are looking for a liquid sweetener, one that's made from you know, sweet potatoes. You know, I, I bought a bottle of that. They sell it at Sprouts. I really wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. So thanks for the tip. Oh, perfect. Okay. 
So yeah, have you ever gonna... tried the hearts of palm noodles? They're pretty cool. They come in all the shapes, even lasagna, and they're literally just made out of hearts of palm. They sell them at Sprouts and Trader Joe's and of course on Amazon. I love that you asked that. I literally have some sitting over here in a shopping bag that I just bought. It's the lasagna noodles and I can't wait to try them. So I'm glad that you, you like them. You like the flavor and the texture. I do. I, I mean, I just think they're so fabulous and, you know, and I love that you don't have to cook them. That's my favorite part about pasta. You know, is it's just, it's such a pain to boil the water and have to cook it. <laughs> right. Oh, that's great. So you just layer them in a pan with like vegetables and your sauce. I, and I'm pretty sure I bought them too. I haven't done it yet, but I don't think you have to cook them. I think you might have to soften them, but I don't think you actually have to go through that whole boiling oh, process. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> All right. So yeah, so we just added that little touch of sweetener there. That'll really help to create that balanced flavor. Like I said, we've got a little salty, sour, sweet, you know, different flavors going on. But if somebody wants to use, you know, just date puree, that's fine too. If you are going to use just, you know, these are just dates that were soaked. Um, you know, you can either just chop them up finely or what you may want to do in this case is put them in a blender, like at least a little mini um, blender or mini food prep and blend it all so it gets a nice smooth consistency. You may need to add a little extra water just to compensate for not using a liquid sweetener. So just another option. So um, let's move on while we're waiting for our kelp noodles to get nice and soft. Let's go ahead and move on to our basil summer rolls. So like I said, these are fun and we even have options here as far as what kind of roll uh, wrappers we're gonna use. So these are extra thin spring roll wrappers. Now these are made from white rice but they do have them these days that are made from brown rice. So that's pretty awesome. So you choose, Chef AJ, what should we use? Should we use the, the white or the maybe, brown? You know, if you're gonna make two, maybe do one of each to see if one is easier to roll. One of each, there we go. All right, so we'll start out with the brown rice paper. That one's got some holes in it. We're gonna use this. There we go, that one. But um, yeah, these are nice because you literally just put them in a little cool water. You dip them in there for about 30 seconds and it softens them up nicely and you have a nice pliable wrapper. So these are also known as like fresh rolls. If you've ever, you know, seen those at Vietnamese restaurants, it's um, kind of a classic Vietnamese uh, recipe. So you'll wanna have your ingredients ready to go. So prepping ahead is key. So what I have here, I've got, these are strips of tofu that I just um, baked with a little bit of, again, our low sodium um, coconut aminos. Or you can use pump foo. I know we've talked about that in our last um, time that I was on here. Pump foo, for those of you who are soy free, is a nice option because it's just made from pumpkin seeds. So you can use that um, as a soy free option if you can find it. Or you could put, you know, what else? You could put chopped peanuts for protein. Even the sauce has protein, so you may not necessarily need extra protein. I've got some shredded lettuce, and then I have some shredded carrots. I've got some fresh cilantro. Over here, you could either use red cabbage or I figured we're using red cabbage in the other dish. So this is actually um, sliced up radicchio for something different. And then I have some fresh basil leaves and some cucumber strips. So this is all refreshing ingredients. So what I'm gonna do now is I have my little uh, bowl of water here. I'm just using something wide like a pie plate. I've got that filled with cold water. And I'm just going to take one of my um, wrappers. This is the the white rice one and just kind of let that sit in there for 30 seconds. You don't want to let them sit in there too long. I've had the experience where they kind of become like mush, but all right, let's see how that does. And then it's really, it's really best to work on a plate. So I'm so sorry. I thought I had everything over here. Let me just grab a plate quickly for our work surface. Have any of you guys ever tried tiger nuts or tiger nut butter? And please remember to come back at 2 p.m. today for a bonus show. It's Thomas Allen from California Balsamic featuring Gilroy Garlic. I'm curious to see if anybody has tried that or heard of it before. All right, so now you can see that this softens up quickly. So, all right. So now you have this nice little wrapper to use. And what we're gonna do is put all of our fillings in there that we wanna put in. So maybe like two pieces of tofu, a little bit of our shredded lettuce, a couple big leaves of our fresh basil, and then the shredded carrots. And you know, you can get so creative. If you go on Pinterest and you put, uh, you know, fresh rolls or basil summer rolls, you'll see people get so creative with like 
thinly sliced golden beets and red beets and just really gorgeous combinations that kind of show through a little bit the skin that look really pretty. All right, so here's our cilantro. Have you ever used like a collard leaf to wrap, to make a wrap? Yeah. I love that. That's such a nice option. And, and that's another great uh, gluten-free and even grain-free option if someone wants uh, to use a collard wrap. Plus it adds nice nutrition, right? Like the, lots of calcium and magnesium. Now, um, before I even roll this up, I'm going to get my other wrapper uh, soaking. So there we go with the brown rice one. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Now, to wrap this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sides and fold them in. So I'm folding in the sides. Then I'm just going to wrap the top over. Think like burrito. This is basically, you know, you're like wrapping... Um, similar to a burrito. And then you have this lovely little presentation. So it was just so quick and easy and fun to do. And, you know, and these are really best fresh. So it's nice to, you know, make these and enjoy these right away. Although you can make them ahead and keep them for maybe like six hours in the fridge. If you're going to keep them um, in a container, you'll want to just cover them with a damp paper towel just to avoid them drying out and not being as tasty as they are fresh. So there's that one. Let's go ahead and uh, make our brown rice version. And when you can you really just, just, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just wondering when you make collard wraps, do you use them raw or do you steam them or soften them in some way before rolling? Great question. So with the collard wrap, I do like to pre-boil them. I drop them in boiling water, just like you would pasta, or you could steam it like you said. Um, and that will help to soften it up. Now, some people will use them, you know, like in raw food recipes, raw, but you may want to marinate it just like we have our, um, you know, noodles and the uh, vegetables, you know, where you add a little lemon juice to the collard leaf, that'll help to break it down a little bit and soften it up so it's not so chewy when it's raw. But personally, I prefer them a little bit cooked. So I do like to, you know, pre-steam them or boil them. Um, so here too, I'm just adding all my ingredients and some people will actually put a little bit of the sauce inside. You could do that too, but otherwise just serving it with a side of the sauce is perfect. And these really make a fun presentation for like a party or something. If you make a platter full of these, they're going to go like crazy. <laughs> All right, and feel free to vary the herbs you're using. I'm using um, cilantro and basil, but you can also use mint in there. You could put scallions. So, all righty. So again, we're just sort of, um, sorry, we can't really do so much of a close-up shot here with the, the laptop filming, but basically you're just lining up your ingredients in the middle, and then you wanna fold the end over and fold the sides over and then just roll it on forward. And generally, you know, don't worry, you, you know, there might be like little tears in it or something here and there, but it's not gonna really affect how portable it is and easy to pick up. So that's, you know, you tell me, this is, uh, you know, one versus the other. They really don't look that much different. And with the brown rice one, you're getting probably a little bit more nutrition. So the white wrap, the white rice wraps are more classic and traditional, but um, whichever one you wanna use, that's really up to you. But those are our two wrapper options. And uh, let's go back to our noodles then. So we're gonna give these a quick rinse. Actually, just so I don't have to keep taking the mic off, just know that you would normally rinse these. I'm gonna, it's not the worst thing to let a little baking soda on there. And just for the sake of the uh, demo, go ahead and show you how to put this together. So yeah, but normally you'd give them a quick rinse just to you know rinse away the baking soda. Then you wanna take your vegetables, which you've been marinating here, and you'll see that even just after five minutes, they've just softened up nicely. And I love the way the red cabbage becomes like a little bit of a more like kind of fuchsia color, it just kind of pops the color a little differently. So we'll squeeze off the extra lemon juice and put that in there. Okay. And this is something too, where if you wanted to add a little bit of chopped up, um, either, you know, the marinated tofu or a little bit of pumfu or even beans, you know, or something like that could like a little bit of kidney beans for protein could be nice. And, you know, if you can't find the tiger nut butter and you do want to substitute almond butter or peanut butter, that's totally fine. That will work as well. Now for a little green color here, I'm going to add our scallions. So I've got a half cup of green sliced scallions. We'll add that. 
And then a little bit of our sauce. And it's up to you how much of the sauce you want to add. I, I, you know, I tend to be a sauce lover, so I'm going to be a little generous on the sauce. But... I think it's just, you know, a sauce like this tastes so satisfying, especially if someone is, you know, skipping the oil, avoiding the oils and focusing more on, um, you know, these sources of fat. I just find that it's very satisfying. And you never miss like the sesame oil or something like that. Okay, and I'm just going to toss this together. It looks like peanut sauce. Right? It's basically just like peanut sauce, only with these tiger nuts. So it's nut free. <laughs> and essentially soy free if we're using our coconut aminos. And gluten free. <laughs> we got a lot, of, a lot of things going on here. So there's our delicious kelp noodle salad. It's kind of like a pad thai in a way. Super satisfying and tasty and really easy to make. And then with these guys, you would just serve these with the side of your dipping sauce. And I wish you could try this. I wish I could just you know, send one off to you and <laughs> have you try it. You know, that's the only thing that's not good about Zoom is you can't taste it. I know, right? <laughs> So yeah, these are just really easy recipes. I don't know if you have any questions, Jeff Ager, if there's any questions popping up in the chat or anything, but. That's amazing. Let's see. You guys have any questions for Christine about the recipes or about her, her cooking school? Tell us a little bit about your school. Like, it, it, is it in person yet? Do, what, what do you offer? Yes. So as far as the cooking school, we have a few different programs. We have like a very introductory free course, actually. We have one free course, it's called The Power of Veggies. And it's a three-part little mini course that sort of gives you a taste of, you know, some of the lessons from the Natural Cooking Mastery Program, which is our, you know, longer signature program. But the free Power of Veggies course is great too. And you can just learn more about vegetables and how to shop for them and how to, you know, prep them and all those things. Um, I'm actually making a spring meal prep video that'll be coming up with all um, vegan plant-based ingredients that's going to highlight, you know, vegetable prep and all that. But, um, but yeah, so that's one free course that people can take just to try it out. And then we have other courses. We have like um, a seven days of deliciousness and that's like a little seven day meal plan where, you know, you get to just find out how to put together plant-based meals and snacks with different recipes. And then we have a 30 day jump start. And then our, our longer program, the cooking more the cooking school program is natural cooking mastery. And that's just a monthly um, program where you can just become a member and then just get access to all eight modules. So we have, we go through like how to cook grains, how to cook beans, you know, um, healthy desserts and entertaining and just all the different areas of, you know, plant-based cooking if someone's, you know, wanting to learn all those basics and fundamentals. So that's how that works. And it is, it is online. Great. So you so wants to know what your favorite recipe from Vegalicious is. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. So it's hard to pick, but um, I have to say, let me just uh, find a, a fun one for you to show you here. I really like, you know, I, I'm a big fan of desserts. Actually, let me just show you that one. So this is a chia pudding. And it's layered with a berry compote. Um, you can use blueberries or any seasonal berries and you just layer it up. And then on top, you make these fun little, um, little sort of spiral shapes of cantaloupe. And you can put like mint on there. So it's another one of those like refreshing summer dishes. And, you know, it's like a dessert, but it's healthy. You get the fiber and the protein from the chia seeds. And you can even make tiger nut milk to use as the milk, you know, any kind of non-dairy milk works well with that. So that's one of my favorites. I, I have to admit I have a sweet tooth and I just love little desserts like that, but that can actually double as a breakfast too. Cause it's so mild. It's not like a really, you know, overly sweet dessert and it looks fancy, but it's so easy to make those little rolls. You literally just take a vegetable peeler and peel little strips of the cantaloupe and roll them up into little spirals and put them on top. And yet everyone will say, wow, you know, it looks so fancy. So that's what you made on the show last time. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's probably why I made it because it is one of my favorites and it's just, you know, easy to make and yet it's just so delicious and it makes a gorgeous presentation. That is great. Well, this is wonderful. And thanks for talking about the school and that free class that you have. I'll put that in the chat. I didn't know you had a, a free offer for people. So that's oh, wonderful. Yes. yes, I should have sent you the link for that uh, directly. I can always send that after the show. So. Absolutely. I'll put it in. I'll put it in the show notes. And how, how long have you had the school? 
yeah, the school's been around since, oh my gosh, since before Anya, my daughter, she's around the corner before she was here. So 2009, I mean, we weren't even doing some classes before then, but that's where we really, you know, started taking off with our chef training program. And our graduates are out there now with, you know, food blogs of their own, or some of them went on to create um, products. Like we have one graduate um, who actually has her own line of vegan chocolates. So Andrea Young, it's called My Sweet Vegan or Sweet Vegan. And they're all vegan chocolate, so you'll have to check her out. But yeah, we really, we're so proud of the people that have come through our training program and then also our online version. We also have people who, again, went on to, you know, more so create like food blogs or health coaching, things like that. So that's it's really fantastic. exciting. Yeah. Asking like, what is the taste of tiger nut? Is it more similar to almond butter? Is it more similar to peanut butter? Good question. I find it more similar to almond butter as far as the texture too, because it is a little bit more you know, thin, um, you have to kind of like mix it up when you open up the jar, you have to kind of use a fork and mix it around because it separates. And then it is um, very, I find it sweet. It's just naturally really sweet. So it's even sweeter than almond butter, but it's just naturally occurring in the tiger nuts. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Love this stuff. Yeah. So we always get this question for just about every guest. We'll see who asked it today, but what do you eat in a day? Oh my gosh, what do I eat in a day? That's a good question. So for breakfast, I actually love to have soup. I know that sounds weird, but I love like miso soup. I love kind of like that Japanese breakfast where, you know, I might have some like rice um, and vegetables. I love like steamed vegetables for breakfast. So I, I like those kind of savory things. Every now and then though on the weekend, I'll do something fun like pancakes or something a little sweet um, or like that chia pudding. And then for lunch, you know, the, when it starts warming up like this, I just love having like a salad or um, what else? Yeah, even like little vegetarian sushi rolls and something like that. And then for dinner, I might have something a little, I don't know, like maybe more like a, you know, casserole or something. If I have time on a weeknight though, it might be more like a, a quick stir fry or something a little faster. But, um, you know, I am a huge soup fan. So for lunch, I had some like creamy squash carrot soup. So yeah, you'll often see me eating soup. <laughs> well, I, I'm a fan of savory breakfast too. And I hear that that's what most of the people in the blue zones have is savory breakfasts. Hey, that's good to know. Oh my gosh. I could like geek out over blue zone. You know, I love like researching cultures from around the world, like the Hunza people and uh, Okinawa. So fun. <laughs> that's so cool. When do you think you might have in, in person classes and where, where is this? schools if people did want to eventually take an in-person class with you. Yes. Okay. So that is something that, you know, we do get requests for at this point, you know, through COVID, we were not doing that. Um, we were just focusing on the online classes. So at this point it is still online, but then um, in the past we've had like an, at least like a live component where I get on and I do like live stream, live stream classes like this, you know, where I interact and um, answer questions and things like that. So it's good to hear the um, desire for that for the in-person classes. I guess now with vaccine or whatever, you know, maybe we'll be able to all get together safely again with masks and social distancing and do those in-person classes. So yeah, let me know if, you, you know, I'd love to hear that if people are interested in that. But at this point, it is still just online. Which classes are the most popular? You know, it's hard to say, but uh, we have had, you know, a lot of enthusiasm over natural cooking mastery, but then for some people who can't, you know, maybe um, don't want to get that far into learning plant-based cooking, they might take more of like seven days of deliciousness. It's only $7 and it's like a, a one week's meal plan and all the recipes like that's something that could really get someone started if they're kind of new to plant-based cooking. Um, and then our 30 day program, the 30 day jumpstart, that's kind of nice also just to kind of you know, have that fresh start in the spring. Sometimes we feel like, ah, oh, I just want to have like a concentrated one month intensive where I really get into this and learn it. So it's hard to say. I think different people will be drawn to different programs, but you know, we, we welcome you, everybody. Do you teach all the classes yourself, Christine, or do you ever have guest instructors? I do have some guest teachers in the natural cooking mastery program. So that's been fun having people teach like raw foods or different um, things there. But um, the other programs, the uh, jumpstart and the meal plan, those are, you know, just that's all curriculum that I've put together. So but I would love to have more guest teachers. I think that's always well, fun. If you ever need like an SOS free or, or pastry chef, I'd love to, because I was just asked by Mark Rainfeld, who has a cooking school in Colorado so that I can be a guest chef. So I would love that. Oh so my God. says, I remember her sweet daughter helping her last time she was <laughs> in. Christine is so patient. Hope her daughter is doing great too. 
Oh, that's sweet. She's right over there. I'm sure she'd love to come say hi if you guys want a little cameo from Anya. It's up to you. She can <laughs> try it by the way. Maybe one day she can do a recipe. <laughs> that's right. Anya, you want to say a quick hi? They were asking how you're doing. You want to come over and say hi and try a some basil summer roll, maybe? <laughs> All right. Let's Nancy wants to know what your favorite kitchen uh, implement or appliance is. Oh, that's a good question too. My favorite um, kitchen appliance. You want to say hi, Anya? Hi. Mm -hmm. Hi. We're going to have you try a bite of one of these. Boy, that's hard to choose, but I have to say I love my Nutribullet. It just comes in handy. I mean, I love my Ooh. Vitamix, but a Nutribullet's great for like small quantities. Often I'm just cooking for, you know, myself and Anya. So I love that little like mini blender. Now, this might be a little messy, but go ahead. You can just try a bite. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if they pass the kid test. What do you think? Good. Yeah, it's good. What, what is Anya's favorite thing that you prepare? <laughs> Anya's favorite thing, you know what she like devours is sweet potato brownies. I make these sweet potato brownies that she just loves. She ends up with like this big like brownie mustache and she just goes crazy for those. Whoops. Well, I know you want to cook too. You want to add some more of the sweetener. Well, actually we didn't add any sweetener to the noodles. So. <laughs> right? You love the brownies? And cookies, but she has a sweet too. So anything sweet, she just loves. Okay, Anya. All right. Nope. I think we're all done with that. How about if you go back and sit down? Thank you for coming to see yeah. Well, it's good to have a live taste tester, you know? That's right. Yeah. She's always up for trying something new. And, you know, it's great that you can really introduce these kinds of recipes to kids. You know, sometimes people who might be trying plant-based cooking or, you know, recipes for the first time might think like, oh, I don't know if my family's going to like this, but you'd be surprised. You know, if we're role models and we eat this way ourselves, like kids are often, they get curious from seeing us eat it and they'll want to try it. So I would say, you know, if you're trying different kinds of foods and more plant-based recipes and vegan recipes with kids, just give it, give it time and they'll be open and try these things. Who, are, who is your normal customer? It, it, like, who, who comes to your school? You know, it's been a variety. We've had like the segment of people who just want to learn for themselves. Maybe they've been through a health crisis. I myself went through my own health crisis in my 30s where I was facing a double mastectomy and I just didn't get the surgery. I took a chance and just changed my diet and my life and I was able to avoid that. So we do have people who've had, you know, cancer survivors and things like that, but we have people who are, you know, uh, also not dealing with any kind of health challenge who just want to cook healthier preventatively for themselves and their families. And then we've had in the past, um, you know, when we did more of like um, the chef training program where people would want to learn to create their own business and be either a personal chef or, you know, create a food blog or become a health coach. So we've had like, you know, both, both segments of people who want to learn just for themselves and be healthy or those who want to share it with their communities and become teachers and and um, role models for their own community so that's very cool here's uh, lauren wants to know if you have any doggies you can show i don't know if you have any pets oh i wish i did i love dogs i love cats but at this point i do not have any pets so <laughs> i plant <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you always buy your tiger nuts on Amazon and your kelp noodles or do you have stores that you can also get them at? Yeah, fortunately, the kelp noodles I have found at my local natural food store, Basil Bandwagon Natural Market. I often partner with them on my YouTube videos uh, over on Christine's Natural Kitchen on YouTube. Um, but these, yeah, I did get at Basil Bandwagon. The Tiger Nut products, however, I haven't found those so much. I think I did get both the Tiger Nut flour and the Tiger Nut butter on Amazon. So I, you know, I love Amazon for certain things like that, that are a little more obscure or esoteric and hard to find. So that could be a good source for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. well, this has been great. Thank you. If you want to just show the, what you made one more time in case. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So here are our noodles. These are the kelp noodles along with that delicious tiger nut sauce and the marinated carrots and the red cabbage. So that's super yummy and makes a great, you know, lunch the next day. And then we have our sampled <laughs> basil summer rolls. So here we've got the one with the, um, the brown rice and the one with made with the uh, white rice wrapper. But yeah, super fun and yummy and versatile and makes a great snack or quick light lunch. <laughs> well, that looks absolutely delicious. Thank you so much. Okay. Christine. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. Oh, thank you for having me, Chef AJ. It was so well, fun. I'm hoping for the fall. So if you want to come back yet again, you're always welcome. I would love to. And we can make some nice warming dishes and fall, cozy fall food. That'd be great. Maybe show what you have for breakfast, your savory breakfast. That sounds amazing. 
Hey, there we go. Yeah, great idea. Okay, we'll do a breakfast right. theme. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm so glad we got the technology to work. I know it was a little rough getting started. So thank oh, you so much. No worries. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back at 2 p.m. Pacific time today. That's in about two hours when my guest is Thomas Allen, the owner of California Balsamic Vinegar. And he's going to be using this month's flavor, Gilroy Garlic, which would be great in Christine's uh, sauce or rolls. And he's going to be making the best marinara sauce ever, farro stuffed vegetable stuffed peppers and a wild walnut component can't even speak, pomegranate and cauliflower stew. Thanks so much, Christine. Oh my gosh, thank you, Chef AJ. It was great to be here and thank you for everyone watching. Great, see you in the fall. Take care. Okay, good, you too, thanks.